Hello there everybody, it's Sally back one more time um, and I'm continuing today my theme of looking at our teaching framework and what, what it consists of and today I'm going to be looking at this idea of being a musician. Now people are very used to me saying that we are musicians first and we are pianists second, okay? The music comes before the pianist and therefore that's why I think musicianship and all the skills that involved is so very important because you build the pianist around the musician. You can't put a musician into a pianist, or at least you can, but it's just so much harder. So let's think about some of those elements, some of those categories that we have under this pillar of being a musician. And I want to just highlight two. And the first one really is the idea of understanding the music. And by that I mean understanding the cultural and the historical um, significance, background of the music. What was going on historically at the time, culturally what was happening. So that you look at the whole package of a piece. A piece of music is never ever composed in isolation from the times that the composer is living in, whether that's contemporary music or whether that is the music of Bach, Beethoven, etc. It always has a cultural background and heritage that we should know about. So, you know, just, just looking here, I've got a piece, uh, a, a gavotte by Dussek. And because I have a lot of experience with this, I know that those notes on the page should sound like this. Have a listen. because it's a gavotte, it's a dance, it's got to have the gracefulness and the light behind it. But also, um, if you heard, I was detaching certain notes and I was detaching all the crotchets, not staccato, just detach. So the, the quavers were, were all played uh, legato, played smoothly, and it just gives that lovely contrast of ideas. Now, how do I know that that's appropriate for this style? Well, um, I've heard many people talk about it, many experts on the subject talk about it in, in over the years. I've read about it, I've studied it, and because I've taught it and I've read all the little, little notes that go along with pieces sometimes, and I think um, both the exam boards and uh, publishers getting better at putting those in, I absorb that and I take it into my teaching. So understanding the music more than just what is written on the page, it's what's written behind the page that isn't on the page. That's an important part, I believe, of being a musician. Now, the other thing I wanted to highlight today is back to musicianship skills. Things like reading at sight, uh, playing by ear, harmonising from a melody, improvisation, memorisation, etc. Um, and even going down to figured bass reading or reading an open score. We've been doing a lot of work on this actually in the Curious Piano Teachers because June we were looking at helping teachers to improve their own sight reading. We took some um, specifically curious ways including open score reading and improvisation because we know that that really helps. So as a musician, we should be exploring and being able to play the piano, particularly learning to think harmonically, because the piano is a harmonic instrument. We play harmony in a way that non-keyboard instruments do not, okay? So therefore, we've got to learn to think vertically, not just horizontally. The horizontal lines are important, but the vertical lines are probably even more important, at least as a starting point. Let's go back to the gavotte in F. Here's another little bit. For example, so if I think about it horizontally, I have this. So that's one thing to have. I've got the, the underneath line. in isolation but actually it's pretty meaningless um, until I start to think about the harmony and if I put those together I'm just going to chunk it harmonically so it sounds like this and all of a sudden I can see 
see there's a counter melody here. Yeah, how lovely to bring that, that out. There's a sort of a holding note there, which isn't very important, but I only, I only know that by looking at the music like this. And actually, the whole of those four bars um, actually is called five, seven, and one. Five, seven, actually, no, that's called five. One, five, seven. One, five, seven. Now, some of those are actually passing notes. But you get the idea, I can reduce it down and it becomes so simple then to actually look at and actually to teach and from the student's point of view to learn as well. So let me give you an example actually, I've just been working with a teacher who said I can share with you. Um, and I gave her the challenge in her last lesson last week, I think, to memorise a grade one piece. So, you know, memorisation isn't something that many, many teachers do very much. So. I told her to memorise grade one piece, but the, the challenge was she couldn't play it at the piano. She had to do it away from the piano completely. So she could look at the music, she could uh, thing, do, do it on a tabletop, really encouraging her to internalise and to think harmonically, thinking vertically like this as she was hearing things. So she spent lots of the week actually analysing the piece, looking at the keys. There were two keys going on in this piece. Then she was looking at the relationships of the notes. She uses solfa, so she was able to sing in solfa and see how many patterns, and the piece was highly patterned. And so that immediately gave her this little template she could fit it into. And um, she played it in just in the session I've just had with her all the way through from memory. And I said, okay, when you start, just keep going. What you can't remember, just improvise. Just improvise. And you know, she came really, really close to playing what was on the page. And she improvised what she couldn't remember. And that was quite easy to do because actually most of the piece was on chord one and five. So because she knew that and understood that, she just had a little guess. And as I say, it was really, really very close. Now you might say, now why, Sally, is this important? Why is it important that something like that we do something like that? And it was interesting that she was commenting that as a teacher for her, she just felt so much more confident now about the piece. She understands it on a different level. The notes have been lifted off the page. They have meaning to her. And therefore she understands the tricky things. She understands much more about how she can present this to her pupils in both imaginative and um, and healthy ways that is going to help them to learn it really quite quickly. So being a musician, really, I think a fundamental part of that is understanding the harmony so that you actually then get a deeper insight into the piece of music because you understand the chords and you understand the relationship of one chord to another. So here's a challenge for you. Why not take a really easy piece, especially if you're not used to, to um, memorising things. Take an easy piece, maybe it could be a piece from a tutor book, maybe from an exam book, whatever you like. Learn it away from the piano, learn it away from the piano, and then see if you can play it. Music shut, absolutely the music shut like that. So, and improvise what you can't remember. But the key to this, remember, literally, is knowing something about the piece, know, understanding the harmonic, um, the harmonic relationships within the piece. There's your challenge. I hope you uh, enjoy doing that, it's lots of fun. Even if it goes completely wrong, you'll learn a lot from it. Thanks for sticking with me today and watching, and look forward to seeing you next week when I'm going to be looking at the final pillar, which is being a professional. Thanks. Bye-bye.